Gaga Slonina has said he's committed in his future. The goalkeeper, 17-year-old goalkeeper from the Chicago Fire, who just got called up by the Poland. Now, great. We're also going to talk about Thomas Tuchel's comments about Christian Pulisic and his recent performance where he may or may not miss a sitter. It's all up for interpretation. We'll get into that as well. But this is going to be a fun one. Heath, what's interesting about the Gaga Slonina news is that I thought for him to commit to the U.S., we were going to have to dangle some carrots there for him to nibble on. You know, like, hey, mm -hmm. we'll call you into the June... Uh, roster. We'll, we'll get you. You're going to be on the, the 26, 27 man roster for the World Cup. Don't worry. It's, everything's going to be fine. A and he's not on this roster for June. So let's start with the goalkeepers first because it's Ethan Horvath from Nottingham Forest, Matt Turner from the New England Revolution slash Arsenal, and Zach Steffen from Manchester City. But no, no, Gaga Slonina, Heath Pierce. Yes. I mean, this is this. I actually like this because it's it's on the day of a roster drop, which I think is the most statement day that you expect that there's some sort of quid pro quo going on between Gaga Slonina and the national team, some sort of secret promise of, of, of access. And I think it's, again, it's another signal that there's something special happening with this national team uh, in terms of why he's committed. Obviously, uh, being a dual national, it's a very personal decision as to why you would uh, commit for, for either national team. But he was just called in for Poland, as we had heard, and then he's chosen the U S and he's not even called into this camp. And obviously he's 17 years old. There's so much more time for him. He's a talented player. Charlie Davies has said it. There's still a lot of his game that needs to be worked on until he's really international caliber, but to make a statement like that on a day that a roster comes out on the day that your name will not be on the list, I think is, is a, is a really great sign of his commitment and that there wasn't strings attached to it. No. And I, I agree. I think that was, uh, Pretty mature. We had a theme earlier in our other podcast today about the collective bargaining agreements for the women's national team and men's national team. If you didn't catch that, make sure you go listen on any podcast platform of choice or catch it on the YouTubes. But it seems like a mature decision from Gaga Salonina as well. But let's go through the roster. I'm just going to name all the names for everybody listening and not watching because it's up on the screen right now. As I mentioned, Horvath, Stefan Turner are our goalkeepers. Defenders, George Bello who moved from Atlanta United to Armenia Bielefeld into the Bundesliga. Mm -hmm. They just got relegated, unfortunately. Reggie Cannon from Boa Vista in Portugal. Cameron Carter-Vickers, who won the Scottish Premiership with Celtic. Aaron Long, back to being close to full health with uh, New York Red Bulls. Anthony Robinson getting the call in. Joe Scally, I think, is a name that people are going to be hungry to see. He's going to get some opportunities here. DeAndre Yedlin, Walker Zimmerman. Those are the defenders. Midfielders, Kellen Acosta, Tyler Adams. Luca De La Torre, Weston McKinney's back in, but apparently they're going to really manage his minutes because he just started training with Juventus. Georgi Mihailovic from Montreal. He's been in fantastic form for his club at MLS. Nice to see him getting a call back in. Yunus Musa, Christian Roldan, and Malik Tillman. Now, Malik Tillman just announced a couple days ago that he's going to make a one-time switch from Germany to the U.S. Apparently, the paperwork has not gone through just yet, but what it does they're hopeful that he'll get some minutes in these uh, four four games in this particular window. Brendan Aronson, Paul Ariola, Jesus Ferrer, Jordan Morris, Christian Pulisic, Timothy Weah, and Haji Wright, who has been tearing it up from, or in Turkey, excuse me. Now, there were a couple of things that we need to discuss, right? Mm -hmm. We need to discuss a couple of things. Uh, Ricardo Pepe, Greg Berhalter said, we're going to get a mental break, and he is honoring that and giving him a break, okay? Yeah. Uh, Serginho Dest, still out hurt. Gio Reyna, still out hurt. Chris Richards is still out hurt. They're all recovering from injury. That's why they're not going to get called in. Jordan P. Falk and Josh Sargent are both injured. And Daryl DK was given the chance to continue his rehab progress. So apparently he was still on the radar and, and uh, they're going to give him a chance to rehab. Now, I guess Greg is going to emphasize, apparently in a press conference or in the press release, that the door isn't closed by any means on guys that weren't on this roster there are injuries and other factors that influence his choices for this particular window. I just named all the names, some, some, some pleasant surprises in there. Guys yep. that have merited this inclusion. Are you happy with this roster overall? Um, who, who I, do you am. Think I, I mean, I mean, who do you think I, we're we're, again, it's it, my, my, my long sigh isn't because of um, players missing due to non-selection. It's, it's players missing due to injury, right? Players that I would like to see in this group, Jordan Pifok being one, Daryl DK again being one, that I just want to see healthy and competing for these spots. I do like the addition of Tillman, and I think Tillman could be a case, and we'll see how he plays in the national team, similar to what I think Yunus Musa was, where you just see something, right? Yunus Musa, you could tell from the very beginning. Whether Yunus Musa is playing or not at, at Valencia, 
I want him on the field with the national team. Would you agree? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yes. I think you get a few of these types of players that are young enough that have enough of that ability where you're like, man, every game they're getting better. Every game they're showing something and they're showing this maturity. And so I think he could potentially be a player that is one of your few sort of doesn't fit the mold in terms of first team minutes and experience and all those things that could be a really bright side for this team. But again, we thought that about Joe Scally, who was actually playing, got called in, didn't seem like the right time. Greg got a couple looks at him. Hasn't uh, has been in and out of the team the second half of the season, but he's another one that I'm excited about because you're like, okay, a game of less pressure, but ultimately for him, a game to prove himself that he's at the international level, that he can compete, that he should be in consideration for the World Cup, especially considering his his ability to be versatile in a number of positions. So, so when I look at this, what I think is up for grabs, everybody, humor me here for a second, okay? I feel like there's still space for our outside backs now. Obviously, for our center backs undoubtedly because of Miles Robinson tearing his Achilles. That mm-hmm. that starting spot at the moment is next to Walker Zimmerman, and I think that's up for grabs. Now, now I feel like our depth is is kind of there. they got to get that figured out. What I find interesting is that Joe Scally's in, George mm-hmm. Bellow's in, we got De- DeAndre Yedlin in. Mm-hmm. Okay, Scally can play either side, right or left. He did it for Bruce yeah. Bunch and Gladbach. He can play on either side. I'm wondering, for like these little mini matchups in camp, who could outlast the other? Who can play better when they get their minutes? I really feel like George Bellow is going up against Joe Scally in that back line. From, from a goalkeeper perspective, per- perspective, excuse me, I think it's between Zach Steffen and Matt Turner to see who starts. So I'm curious to see who gets the first game against Morocco and who gets the next game against Uruguay, right? And then I feel like when we get to Granada and El Salvador in the Nations League, I, 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 I don't want to say hate. Hate sounds really strong. But I dislike when... We might try a Joe Scally in that game where the competition isn't as stiff as it would be against an Uruguay or Morocco. How do we know how Joe Scally is going to be in a World Cup game if we're rolling him out against Granada for 60 minutes? You know what I mean? I don't, I just not like for like for me. So there's all these little mini battles here. Now, now Cameron Carter Vickers coming back in is interesting. He's going to be battling Aaron Long and, and Eric Palmer Brown, uh, which who we just interviewed on In Soccer We Trust. Uh, earlier this week and excited to have him on and a friend of the show. Uh, I, it, it, there's so many questions here, but these are all good questions to have because it means we actually have some talent and some depth that we know we can trust. Hopefully we're going to learn that in these next uh, four games, by the way, just so you guys know the schedule, June 1st, we play against Morocco. Uh, June 5th, we play against Uruguay. June 10th, we play against Granada at home. And then finally we hit El, hit the road to play El Salvador in El Salvador on June 14th. Those are the four mm-hmm. games in this. This is a big window because we only have two more friendlies after this, everybody. So there's going to be a lot of evaluating, I think, in these four games. 